Welcome to another episode. This time I'll be counting down my favourite arcade games from Tecmo. The Imperial Trustee Corporation originated in 1967 and started selling amusement products in 1969. The company was renamed in 1977 to Tekan Limited before officially changing its name to Tecmo in 1986. During the 80s and 90s, Tecmo released some fantastic arcade games before merging with Koei in 2009. These days, Koei Tecmo are best known for producing games in the Dead or Alive and Dynasty Warriors series. So let's begin with my pick for number 10. At number 10, I've chosen the one-on-one -on -one fighting game Tokidensho Angel Eyes. This game was released in 1996 and features an all-female cast of characters. It's a fairly basic fighting game with responsive controls and a standard set of special moves. There is one odd feature about the game's graphics. Some of the cast are standard 2D sprites and others were created in 3D. I'm not quite sure why this was, but it can often look like the characters are from completely different games. With so many other superior choices of game in this genre, it would be hard to recommend Toki Densho Angel Eyes to anyone other than fighting game enthusiasts. At number 9 we have an arcade classic, Bomb Jack. This game was released in 1984 when the company was still known as Tekan. It's a colourful single screen platform game where you must guide our hero around the screen to collect all the bombs. It probably seems very basic now, but Bomb Jack is still a lot of fun to play and it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. At number 8 we have a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up from 1992, Final Star Force. This game was the follow up to Star Force and Super Star Force and features a 1 or 2 player option with an automatic power up system which improves your weapon over time. Graphically the game is impressive and features some great stages with some nice detail in the background. Final Star Force is a solid entry in the shoot 'em up genre and definitely worth checking out if you get a chance. At number 7 I've gone with Silkworm, a horizontal shoot 'em up from 1988. What stood out about Silkworm was the option to play as a helicopter in the sky or a jeep on the ground, creating variety in gameplay. Each player has to use different tactics to destroy enemies and avoid taking damage. I would definitely consider Silkworm to be a classic arcade game and it's one I still enjoy going back to play. At number 6 I've chosen the side-scrolling action classic Rygar. Released in 1986, Rygar sees the player take control of a warrior who must fight his way through each stage using the disc armor, a weapon which is a chain attached to a shield. I really enjoyed the fast pace of this game. This allowed the player to run through stages quickly with most enemies taking just a single hit to destroy. Rygar is one of those must-play classic arcade games from the mid-80s. The visuals and sounds are a perfect example of what arcade gaming was like around that time. At number 5 I've chosen Tecmo Knight, 
a side-scrolling beat-em-up that arrived in arcades in 1989. This was an interesting entry in the genre, as players had the ability to switch between riding on the shoulders of a giant or on the back of a tiger, each with their own different attack style. A third form is available, which sees the player ride on the back of a powerful dragon which is accessed by collecting a specific power-up. The game features plenty of blood and violence as you fight your way through some nicely designed stages accompanied by a quality soundtrack. In 1989, Tecmo Knight was overshadowed by far superior games in the genre, but it was still a great game and one I enjoyed playing. At number 4, it's not so much one game, but an entire series. Dead or Alive. The first game in the series was released back in 1996, at a time when 3D fighting games were increasing in popularity. The graphics were impressive and the gameplay was smooth, and these attributes would only improve further with each release. Dead or Alive is probably my favourite 3D fighting game series, and it's one that just keeps getting better. At number 3 I've chosen Strato Fighter, a horizontal shoot 'em up which was released in 1991. Up to two players can take part in the action and it's your job to stop the alien invaders from destroying Earth. There isn't anything that innovative about Strato Fighter, it's just a very good example of the genre. There are plenty of power ups on offer and the ability to spin the ship around and fire in the opposite direction. The graphics and sound are fantastic, and it's a shoot 'em up I would definitely recommend checking out. At number 2 I've chosen a classic arcade football game, Tecmo World Cup 90. I played so much of this game in arcades and would always go back to it for many years after it was released. You take control of one of 8 international teams and take part in a knockout competition. The controls are basic with just 2 buttons performing basic long and short kicks when attacking and a slide tackle and jump when defending. Tecmo did release arcade football games after this one, which are technically more advanced, but World Cup 90 will always be my favourite in the series. At number 1 it just had to be Shadow Warriors, which some of you may know better as Ninja Gaiden. This side-scrolling beat-em-up arrived in arcades in 1988, and is a completely different game to the one released on the NES around the same time. One or two players take to the streets on the mission to stop the leader of an evil cult. You will be attacked by all manner of enemies, from men in hockey masks to sumo wrestlers and other ninjas. You have a standard attack and jump button with the ability to flip and throw enemies. You can also hang from various parts of the scenery, which can be handy to kick enemies and avoid traffic. This was one of my favourite arcade games when I was growing up, and I even spent a lot of time playing the terrible home versions on the Spectrum and Commodore 64. If you haven't played the arcade version of Shadow Warriors or Ninja Gaiden before, then I'd recommend checking it out. It's not one of the best examples of the genre, but it's definitely a classic. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and subscribe to the channel for future content.